All right, guys. Uh, thank you for watching today. Uh, we're gonna talk about. We're moving on to chapter three, section three. We're gonna talk about some properties of logarithms and how we can use them. Eventually, where we're going with this is we're gonna be able to use some of these properties to solve uh, logarithmic equations as well as exponential equations. So, in order for us to get there, you first need to know how to use these properties. Okay. So what we're gonna do is uh, first of all, let me kind of put my calculator here on the screen and I kind of want to show you some things about the calculator so you've been using this calculator for a while now and hopefully you've noticed that the calculator has a logarithmic button as well as a natural log button remember this log button it's a logarithm with a base of 10 so anytime you press this button notice how it doesn't actually write a base there that's because it is assumed that the base is 10. So anytime you see a logarithm without a base, you are to assume that it's a base of 10. Uh, and then this one right here, the ln, it is also a logarithm. What happens here is that the logarithm is a base of e. So to differentiate between the two, we just call it the natural logarithm, so ln. And these are the two logarithms that get used the most. However, as you've seen in the previous sections, there's more than bases other than 10 and e. So what if we have a logarithm base, I don't know, something like, let's say that we have logarithm base 4 of 25, and we're trying to figure out what that's equal to. Well, unfortunately, on our calculator, we only have those two buttons, okay? Now, I say that unfortunately because I'm actually going to come back and show you that now these calculators have the capabilities of handling any base, but back in the day, it didn't have this software, so I still want to share this with you just in case you ever run into it and you don't have one of these handy calculators to figure out any of the logarithms other with bases other than 10 or E. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a change of base formula. Okay, So let's talk about it. So the change of base formula. So here's what it looks like. So let's say that you have a logarithm of some base A of something. What we can do is we can change this to any base. Now, since we can change it to any base, in order for us, really what we're trying to do here is we're trying to solve this, and we're going to use our calculator for it. So if we want to change it into something our calculator can handle it, we're going to try to change it to either base of 10 or base of E. But really you can use this to change into any type of base. So let's say that we want to just change it to some other type of base. So let's call it, I don't know, some base, any base. Let's call it base B. Okay, so really what you got to do is the false. It's going to become a quotient, so you're going to have a fraction. You're going to have a logarithm, and since you want it to become base B, let's just go ahead and put base B, and you're going to have the same logarithm with the same base, both top and bottom. Here's where things are going to change, and here's where we're going to get them from. So right here, we're going to take this and we're going to put them in here, but specifically in a, one of them is going to go in the numerator and one of them is in the denominator. And here's the way I remember it. So because this is the base of this logarithm, this is going to go on the basement of this fraction. So the basement meaning the denominator. So this is going to become log base b of a. And by default, we're just going to put the x here. Now you've changed this from base a to base b. So now you may be asking, well, that looks worse. We, we took one logarithm, now it looks like a quotient with two logarithms. Again, the whole purpose of this was that we're going to change it into some type of base that's going to help us out solve the problem. So let me give you an example. Let's say we want to take this right here and change it into a log that's going to help us out. So we're going to change it to base 10. So let's say we're going to take logarithm base 4 of 25. We're going to change it to base of 10. So what we're going to do is we're going to first write it as logarithm over logarithm. Remember, if I'm not writing a base, it's already assumed that it's a base of 10. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, remember, I'm going to put this on the basement, and then by default, this is going to go here. And now I've converted this into logarithm of 25 over logarithm of 4, which is something that my calculator can handle. Now, if you didn't have a calculator, we could leave it like that and call that an answer, but we have a calculator, so let's try it out. We're going to go into our calculator. Uh, we're going to hit alpha y equals enter so I can get this fraction here. So I'm going to hit logarithm and then we set 25 over logarithm of 4. And I'm going to hit enter. 
So according to my calculator, this is approximately, and I'm going to use, I'm going to switch this sign up a little bit. So instead of equals, I'm going to use an approximation, approximately 2.322. And that would be the answer for that. And that's how we can use the change to base formula to help you figure out some other base that's not on the calculator to figure it out. Now let's say, uh, let's say we didn't actually use base of 10. Could we have used base of E and get the same answer? Well, let's try it out. So let's say we want to change this to a base of E. That makes this automatically ln. So ln of 25 over ln of 4. So let's try it on our calculator. We should get the same answer, right? So ln of 25 over ln of 4. We're going to hit enter and as you can see it gives you the exact same answer 2.322. So once again this change of base formula is really there to help you turn a logarithm into a base that your calculator can handle. Now some of you guys may be aware of this so let me go ahead and include it in the video. This calculators have software that can handle anything now. So you can actually handle this problem exactly how it looks. So let me show you how to take care of it on this calculator. So the first thing you want to do is, there's actually several ways to get there. So here's the way that I know. If you hit alpha and you hit window, it brings up this menu here. Option number five brings you, it says log base. If you hit enter, it actually allows you to input any base that you want. So we can say four and then the 25 and if we hit enter notice how I'm getting the same answer. So you can actually, I'm sorry, you can actually get any type of logarithm on the calculator. Now if you're in my class, I will expect you to know how to change the base. So please don't just disregard what I just showed you with the change the base formula and uh, and just learn the calculator way. So please make sure that you can do both. Okay. So I just want to give you a couple problems for you to practice. So I'm going to go ahead and put them here. So let's do an example. And I want you to change the base of the logarithm into base 10. Okay, so the, here's the first one that I want you to try. So let's say that you have logarithm base 2 of 12. And let's say that you have, I don't know, logarithm base 5 of 13. Okay, so go ahead and change both of those logarithms into base of 10. Pause the video and when you're ready to go, I'll go ahead and show you the answers. Okay, I'm assuming you've already given it a go, so let's go ahead and find out what this would look like in base of 10. So this would be log of 12 divided by log of 2. And we'll leave it like that since all I asked you was to change the base. Number 2, it would be log of 13 over log of 5. And we're done. So hopefully you understand now w how we can use the change of base formula and really why we use it and uh, why it was developed in the first place prior to for us having, us having this uh, technology. Alright, we are now going to switch topics a little bit. So we're going to talk about three properties of logarithms. So I'm going to go ahead and I've already written them down here on, on, on my piece of paper. So I want you to go ahead and pause the video and write them down. And then once you're ready to go, just hit play so that I can discuss them with you. Okay. All right. I'm assuming you've given it a go. So let's talk about each one of these properties individually. So the first property that we're going to talk about logarithms is called the product property. So what's happening is we have a logarithm with some base. And as you notice, we have two things multiplied together. So in this case, we're going to call it U and V. This could be expressions. This could be numbers. Really, as long as two things multiplied together. So what you can do with that is you can actually split it into two different logarithms. You can take it and split it into the logarithm base, same base, A, of the first one, so of U, plus the logarithm with the same base of the other one. Now this doesn't have to be brought down to just two terms. This could be U times V times W, so then that would add up third logarithm, which would be log base A of W and so on. Okay. All right, number two, we got our quotient property. Our quotient property is really what it sounds. Quotient is division. So what's happening is we have a logarithm with some base, but now we have two things being divided by each other. The way that this one works is you can actually split into multiple logarithms. So we can take it and split into, and I forgot to write my bases, uh, logarithm base A of the top of the numerator 
minus the logarithm of the same base of the denominator. Okay? So once again, it doesn't have to just be just two terms divided. We could have several things going on here. So this is the most basic example. We're going to try a few of these to make sure that you understand them. Okay? And lastly, we have our power property. The power property is really what it sounds like. You're going to have, for example, a logarithm of some base. But now, whatever you're taking the logarithm of has a power. Now, the power property allows you to do the following. You can take this power here, and you can just literally move it to the front, which is what I did here. So we would have the power in the front, and it would just become n times the logarithm a base of u. So now, this time, without the power. Okay? So now, why do we use these three properties? Well, these three properties are going to help us in our next lesson, which is solving equations. Now, the other thing I want to talk about before we kind of move on and try some of this is that if we can go from here to here, that means that we can also go from here to here. That process has a different name. So if we go from this side, so from the left-hand side to the right, that's called an expansion. As you can see, it's, come, it's going from one logarithm to multiple logarithms, so I'm expanding the logarithm. Okay? Opposite would be that if I have something like this where I have multiple logarithms and I go backwards, that's called condensing, condensing the logarithm. I'm going from having multiple logarithms to just one logarithm. And we're going to practice both of these processes, and hopefully you'll recognize how to use these logarithms. Okay? All right, here's the first example that we're going to try. So the instructions are to expand the logarithm. So when I see the, whole, the word expand, that means I'm going to have multiple logarithms. Okay, so I'm going to analyze this and see what's happening. So the first thing I notice is that I have a logarithm with a base 4, and I have three things multiplied together. So I have 5 times x to the third times y, which then tells me I'm going to be able to split this into three logarithms with the same base. So that's the first step I'm going to take. So I'm going to say logarithm of the base 4 of the very first one, so it's 5, plus logarithm base 4 of the second term, which in this case is x to the third, plus logarithm base 4 of y. Now, I'm going to analyze this to make sure I, ca I, I can use any more of the properties. So I'm looking at this log, and it, it seems like I'm done with that one. There's nothing else I can do with it. Same thing with this one. But what I'm noticing is on this middle term, I have a power. So that means I can use the power property. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to use the power property to bring this number to the front. So my final answer would be the logarithm base of 4 of 5 plus 3 times the logarithm base 4 of x plus logarithm base 4 of y. And that would be our final expansion of the logarithm base 4 5x to the third y. Cool. So hopefully you find that uh, example relatively simple, so I'm going to actually give you a few examples. I'm going to, I'm going to have you try one more, and uh, I want you to go ahead and pause the video and try it on your own. So let me go ahead and give you that example. Let me flip the page. I want you to try this example on your own. So we're going to have the natural log of the square root of 3x minus 5 over 7. So go ahead and pause this video and give it a try, please. All right, I'm assuming you already gave it a try for this problem, so here's how you do it. Uh, so what I noticed first, we have a, not a logarithm in which we're dividing. So I'm going to be able to use the quotient property and split it into two logarithms. A logarithm of the numerator minus a logarithm of the denominator. Now, you may look at this and think to yourself that you're done, but you got to go back and remember from algebra that when you take the square root of a number, it's the same thing as taking that number to a power. So I'm going to rewrite this as the natural log of 3x minus 5 to the 1 half power instead of as a root. The reason why you would want to do that is because now we can apply the power property and we can take this and bring it to the front. And rewrite it as such. Now be very careful. When you look at this, I know you may be tempted to want to split this up right here because you see multiplication, but we're not going to be able to do so because of this minus. Therefore, because the minus is there, there's no way you can split this two apart, which means that it's going to have to stay together, and you cannot expand this any further, and this would be your final answer. Okay? 
Alright, so now we've expanded things, so now we're going to go backwards. We're going to condense. So we're going to condense the logarithm. So let's pretend that I give you something like this. One half <coughs> logarithm base 10 of x plus 3 logarithm base 10 of x plus 1. Alright, so when you're condensing, your job is to take multiple logarithms and rewrite it as one logarithm. So the first thing I notice is that I have numbers in front, so I'm going to be able to use the power property backwards. So that means I'm going to take this and make it into the power. So if I rewrite this, I have the logarithm base 10 of x to the 1 half power plus the logarithm base 10 of x plus 1 to the third power. Now, notice that I'm adding. So since I'm adding, I'm going to be able to use the product property. And the product property tells you that then I can take two, these two logarithms with the same base, so logarithm base 10, and just multiply this out. So x to the 1 half power is the same thing as the square root of x times x plus 1 to the third power. At this point, you would be done. Notice that you took two logarithms and through the process it became to just one logarithm. Logarithm base 10 of this entire thing. Okay? So I'm going to give you an example for you to try and after that I want you to pause the video and give it a try. So the one you're going to try is 2 natural log of x plus 2 minus ln of x. Go ahead and pause the video and give it a try. Alright, I'm assuming that you've already given a try to this problem, so let's go ahead and try it out. So, first of all, we notice the number here, so that means we're going to be able to use the power property of logarithms to rewrite it. So this becomes natural log of x plus 2 squared minus natural log of x. Second thing I notice is I have two logarithms with the same base that are being subtracted, therefore I can use the quotient property, and I'm going to rewrite it as 1, with this one being on top, on the numerator, divided by that and you've successfully condensed the logarithm. Alright, uh, at this point you've reached the end of this lesson, so make sure that you took notes and in class we'll attempt more practice. Thank you for watching.